Welcome to Cosmic Roadmap. I'm your host, Melissa Lambor, Reiki Astro Geo Guide and author. I support endless wanderers with where they are meant to be in the world. This podcast is for the digital nomad, the avid traveler, and aspiring globetrotter who is seeking their next destination on planet Earth. Join us as we venture around the world through people's stories and how astrogeography has connected them to their planetary energies and purpose. My special guest today is Brianna Brown. She is a soul body alchemist who guides folks through shadow work and inner child healing to dismantle patriarchal constructs and alchemize traumas in a way that allows them to access their most authentic core essence. She's recently expanded into guiding empowered women into deeper communion with their womb space while reclaiming their sexual nature. And we both met through mutual friends, Melissa Cherneau and one of my uh, co-authors from Legacy Speaks, Ashley Defray. And yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yes. Yeah. So just dive a little deeper. We, you know, you, you were one of my past clients and we had such an amazing session where we found so many synchronicities and um, you feel like you, it's been serendipitous really where you're connecting to two people uh, from a distance. So yeah. uh, Tell me a little bit about that. Absolutely. So I had to go back and see when it was that we had our session because time has been really really abstract since then. And it was March of 2021. So March of last year, almost a year now. And when we had our session at that time, I was feeling so disjointed. And I'm sure you recall, I was really unclear on what to do next. I was living in my hometown for the first time in almost 10 years, feeling really like resentful about being there and ready to leave. And I didn't know where to go because I wanted to go everywhere. And when you and I had our session, all of the different locations, ge- geographical uh, lo- locations around the world were really aligned to the places that I felt called to, which was so interesting to me that that was aligned to my astrological chart. It makes sense. And um, at the time I I was so inspired that what I was called to kind of organically and intuitively was also part of my astrological makeup. And I felt really called to, um, to figure out where to go next. And I was feeling really like masculine about it. And I know that during the Reiki session, I really felt this like beautiful sense of surrender with you. And it was this call to kind of ground and root and to be like, just okay with where I was and where I was going and to trust and surrender rather than try and like force things into their place and figure out the next piece. And, um, and it was really nice to feel that in my entire body when you were, you know, guiding me through the Reiki session. And since then my world has changed so much and I really did surrender and trusted with ebbs and flows, of course. Um, Since then I have left my career as a speech therapist to fully embrace my work mentoring and guiding women through this really powerful embodied journey. I went full-time in my business in June. I officially let my speech and language pathology license expire December 31st. So January 1st was like, oh my gosh. All in. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I didn't have that in my back pocket anymore. You know, I was like, okay, this is a testament to the universe. And very coincidentally, maybe even ironically, I decided to stay in the middle of Michigan. I fell in love and leaned into stability and um, safety and love, which was something I hadn't felt really in a very long time. And so what, what I felt during our Reiki session, which was this like grounding, almost like an inner hug, like a soul hug is what I feel in this relationship. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to stay here. And my partner has three children. So we're definitely staying at least in Michigan, probably not the middle. And what I've done is I've actually connected with those places that were on my chart in a different way. So when I'm promoting my workshops or promoting my programs online, I set my audience to be connected to the UK and to Ireland and to Thailand um, to Panama and Costa Rica and all these other places that 
came up during our session. So I'm still yes. establishing those energetic and spiritual connections without forcing myself to be there or to try and be everywhere at one time. And it's been amazing. I've made some really beautiful connections with people globally and it's just been really wonderful. I love hearing that because with my clients and with you, I usually recommend, yeah, you know, from a distance, try to make connections and try to feel the vibe out even before you go there, because you don't know Mm -hmm. how exactly you're going to interact with that energy. Um, You know, I can guide you to a particular energy to feel at home, but maybe it might interact a little differently because astrologically, you know, it, it can be, um, yeah, it, it can be a little different, um, compared to the archetypal, uh, type or the, uh, the behavior that, that may, may be elicited uh, through that energy. So, yeah. So like, how, how was it before? I know that you, you've been going through waves of, you were a speech therapist and, and now you're, you're even evolving in your business because, yeah you've been going through many evolutions and I think you're a manifesting generator as well right yeah yes yeah, so, yeah, so we have our, our hands in in multiple areas <laughs> always <laughs> yes yeah that's a really great question before I was very boxed in um I was very I was boxed into this career and boxed into this idea of shoulds and have tos and what ifs, but like the fearful what ifs, not the expansive what ifs. And I just felt stuck and misaligned and yucky and really honestly overwhelmed. Like I didn't understand my soul's tug in so many different directions. I didn't understand my kind of like muckiness in my heart space as well. Despite doing a ton of work, there was still this, I don't know, this lack of clarity there. So that's, I was definitely just, I was mucky. I was stuck. I was overwhelmed. I was disjointed, dysregulated for sure. And yeah, now it's like clarity. And I think something that's really shifted for me is this ability to trust the expansion as a manifesting generator, to trust that what lights me up is the right thing. And to trust that just because I can't go somewhere now in our digital age, we can still connect with that space energetically. So that feels just absolutely amazing to be so in tune with, you know, what my, what my soul is really being called to. And like geographically, I might be here in Michigan, but energetically I'm reaching people in these places that I think my soul is really called to. Yeah. And how did you get to to that clarity? Was it just constantly, you know, trying to be more authentic as as you showed up? Mm, I would say it was really honoring my my yes and my no, and mm. really like um, a lot of people would say like giving it to God. I'm not Christian per se, but giving it to the universe really like yeah. opening my hands and being like, oh okay, like. I trust that this aligned action is going to take me closer to where I'm meant to be. And the more, the more that I said yes from an authentic space and from a soul aligned place, the more the misaligned things kind of fell off. And also, you know, you leap and the net appears like more opportunities kept appearing and keep appearing. The more that I pivot and expand and pivot and expand and trust and surrender and play, I would say that paired with, um, prioritizing my pleasure, prioritizing my joy and my like inner child validation, Yes, <laughs> not taking everything so seriously all the time, you know, that really helped a lot as well. Yeah. And I'm, I'm totally about yeah, leaning into the, into the pleasure. Like I just got a hot tub recently and in the middle saw- of wind in the middle of winter, and it just seems like a crazy idea, but it's, it's really tapping into, I love water and unfortunately I can't jump into the lake. It's, it's a little cold. Um, but yeah, you, you, you kind of shift your environment too, to, to fit mm-hmm. that and to allow for, for play. And, um, yeah, I, I really love that, that, that you're doing that. And do you see yourself connecting, um, with your planetary energies in, in other ways, um, other than just connecting virtually, um, through crystals or maybe incorporating, you know, like arts or uh jewelry from other places actually well that's a really beautiful idea and now I feel really called to do that (laughs) that's 
beautiful. It's a very beautiful idea. One of my clients has a beautiful like altar space. Yeah. With like different, yeah. Different pieces from, (gasps) yeah. Mm -hmm. That's such a beautiful idea. I will connect with each energy. Yes, (laughs) absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's so expansive and such a great way to like honor your soul's mission and purpose. I'm going, I'm going to be doing that probably after this call. Um, (laughs) I don't do that yet. You can bet that I will though, but I do, um, intend to start hosting retreats. I was hoping to start doing this in the spring. Um, the whole pandemic situation is a little bit messy right now, as we know, so it might be being pushed back again a bit, but my intention is to start hosting retreats in these places. There is, um, in Edinburgh or Edinburgh, how I'm always fearful yes, of saying in, it wrong. in Scotland. Yes. In Scotland. And I really it's so feel interesting called. because every time that I, I show someone Scotland, I remember our session because you were looking into <laughs> retreats or, or mm-hmm. I think we discovered that there were retreats on our, on our mm-hmm. session. And every time I'm like, Oh, you know, there's retreats there. And they're like, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yes. thank you for, for opening that up to me. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank you for helping it really land for me. And I, that's what I really want to do is start connecting with these different places, Thailand, Costa Rica, Scotland, Um, even in the UK, there are some really great retreat possibilities. And that's my ultimate intention and goal in life is to have a retreat center, but also to host international retreats. And so that is something that I feel really called to. And I feel so deeply like having that altar space and having something from each of these places would really help manifest that and bring more clarity and more opportunity as, as it does. So that's a really, I will be definitely on that today. I'm so excited about that. Yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit more about the the type of retreats that you want to host. I know that you've evolved into um, like really leaning into your sexuality. So, and I love that for you because even from, from the very beginning, I know that you were kind of disjointed and didn't know how to like bring it all your your magic together so yeah tell me a little bit about that thank you I'm so glad you've been able to witness because I really thought in June that I had it all figured out I was like oh my gosh we all do I know what I'm doing (laughs) right and then especially as manifesting generators it's like oh nope now it's this and oh nope now it's this so evolving into this sexual embodiment and Mm -hmm. this reclamation of the womb space has been you know that's the work that I was doing that helped me expand into a deeper iteration of my own truth so of course I want to continue expanding my business to follow suit so I can guide others because holy smokes it's been it's just been amazing like it's been truly magical and alchemical in my life like the way that I live my life is so different now um so for retreats gosh I mean again with the manifesting generator energy I have like a whole wild range of what I would really like to be doing so I have one dream of doing like a a mushroom retreat where it's kind of a plant medicine. And what I have in my mind's eye is like a 12 week container with people who are microdosing and expanding and doing like inner child and shadow work and also connecting to pleasure and play and just like really, really alchemizing for like 12 weeks and then coming together in person and maybe having instead of a microdose, like a bigger dosage and holding space for one another and moving through things together. And I see a lot of like creation and dance and connecting with the earth. So that's one that I have. Um, I also have one in mind for sisterhood and like a pleasure centered retreat where we're really connecting to our womb space and engaging in pleasure practices and not like sexual pleasure, but like intuitive movement, sensual dance, um, body painting. Um, I've seen this, um, trying to think of how to explain it. I saw this one, I don't want to say display, but this one woman that I follow, she had a birthday recently and she was lying in the center of a room and all of her community was placing flowers on her body and celebrating her. And I just imagine like each woman taking an opportunity to receive like that. So I feel like the the way that I operate is very organic and like in the moment. So I just have this feeling that like the details of the retreat will come when it's time to start announcing it. So it's kind of like bigger picture right now. And I haven't honed in on the details, but yeah, I've got so many ideas going on in my mind. (laughs) I love that. And yeah, I would love to attend those. (laughs) 
<laughs> and you would be invited. Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Honorary guest. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, that yeah. would be amazing. And where do you, where do you see the future of your, your business and like kind of connecting it with astrogeography? If, if that's something that, that you are already envisioning, um, you're, you're already connecting with people virtually. Um, now you're going to be doing that altar space <laughs> and mm-hmm. yeah, those future retreats in, in mind, like what, what else is, is coming to mind? Hmm. I would say, well, I have this bigger vision for my business and my business actually feels more like my mission, my like mission in life these days. It, yeah. It's like a movement. It feels like a movement really. Um, somebody recently pointed out an author, gosh, who was it? Eileen something. She, this specific author said that your business shouldn't be your baby. It should be like a wild love affair. And mm. that's definitely how it's been feeling for me. And the more I connect with it through the lens of pleasure and love and, alignment and truth and integrity and everything that just feels like it's from my heart and not concern about making it quote unquote, the more that I connect with it that way, the more it really does feel like a movement. So I have this vision of my business this year transforming. I'm really kind of restructuring it. I started out just doing one-on-ones. I really want to have more of a community reach and have more like large group offers and then some more intimate group offers and then even more intimate and fewer one-on-ones because I feel so called to reach so many people by way of dismantling the patriarchy and bringing women back to who they truly yes. are and um, how that ties into astrogeography. Yeah, I guess I you are, you are you are aligning with the energies, you know, by by connecting with those those clients or or those communities, yes. right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The way that I've been planting the seeds and mm-hmm. creating opportunity in those communities, I just feel so called to work with the people there. You know, I have mm-hmm. amazing people here in this country and I have amazing people around the world that I feel called to connect to. I also had points in like the Pacific Northwest and down in mm-hmm. the Pacific Southwest. I've never called it that before. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but in the Southwest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um I I also target audiences there when I'm um advertising and announcing. And also in Austin, Texas, even though the line was specifically through San Antonio, I feel really called to Austin. Yeah. And yeah, so I've been doing that as well, which I hadn't realized until now that that also overlapped with our session. So yeah, just creating awareness and creating connection and calling them in. It's beautiful to be able to do so virtually because there are so many places and people I want to reach. Yeah. It'll, and yeah, the, the virtual space allows us that, that opportunity. Um, but yeah, so what are your offerings? What, how can people work with you now and mm-hmm. um, yeah, work with your medicine? Absolutely. So I have, let's see, We had talked a little bit about how I've been evolving and expanding into the sexual embodiment work. However, I just, I do still have my signature program that's available to folks. So that one's called Cultivating Inner Harmony. And it's a 12 week journey with online coursework and weekly sessions, uh, weekly guided meditations, and it's powerful. It's beautiful. It's transformational. It's really for the person who is just kind of opening up to their spiritual journey and wanting to deepen their connection to themselves. It's a lot of chakra work and chakra exploration, also neuroplasticity. So rewiring the mind and embodiment work. So bringing it down to the level of the body, which is so important because we can't really intellectualize our way through healing. We have to do it at the level of the body as well. So that one is available. I actually only have one one one-to-one spot available for that right now, but that is something that's rolling. So that enrollment kind of I open it up every few months when I have the availability Um, and I'm in the middle of a launch actually and it's probably my favorite offering yet it's called embodied sexuality it's an eight-week journey into the womb space oh it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it it feels juicy yes it's juicy yeah it's so juicy it's like oh god it just like it honestly turns me on thinking about it it's all about like reconnecting to pleasure and reclaiming the validity of being a woman who has sensual and sexual desires and to Mm -hmm. be able to embrace and express and experience them without shame like we have been taught to do for so long it's reclaiming our sexuality as our own not just for our lover um 
womb space healing, guided meditations, cord cutting ceremonies, pleasure practices, embodiment practices, as well as online coursework so that you can dive as deep as you want to into that work. I have a few spots still open for that. And I'm like, it just, I love it so much. That will definitely be a course that I'll offer again. So we start January 19th and it's just this, like the women that are coming together in this community are so empowered and they know their worth, but they're ready to like fully, fully embody it. And, you know, I think Mm. that what happens for a lot of us is we, we do all of this really beautiful spiritual work and we get to this point where we feel like we're just about there, but there's this block. There's like something that's like still kind of stuck. Like we're afraid to fully express and we're afraid to show up authentically, or maybe we still have relationship problems and struggle with our, our sexual expression or our receptivity and things like that. And this is a way to alchemize that and to integrate that piece so that that can be part of you, you know, it's a place where all parts are welcome. And so that's something that I'm offering right now. I'm so excited about it. And then I also do intuitively led one-to-one containers. I have only one spot for that right now. And that's a, well, it's intuitively led through the lens of an elemental and seasonal approach. So it's 16 weeks. It's um, four seasons to womb alchemy and it's I take you through each season and we kind of intuitively move through each season based on the person's unique needs and traumas and experiences and intentions and things like that I am in love with that one as well we incorporate all of the elements we incorporate yoni de-armoring yoni exploration uh, yoni steaming all of the yoni work all of that beautiful stuff as well as a, a ton of embodiment practices and shadow work and inner child healing so I've really taken what I was doing and found a way to integrate it into where I'm moving if that makes sense <laughs> yeah yeah because you yeah the the inner child work and the womb space are are all interconnected right the it's all it's right. all if you look at it in terms of the the chakras so mm-hmm. I I love that you've been working with that and that you've been leaning more into the sexuality part because it's so it's so taboo right that's that's where I kind of started with my identity like working through my sexuality and when I finally embodied that I felt whole like I you know, you, you start stepping into who you truly are. So I, I thank you for, for doing this work and, and for leading, um, yeah, um, you know, people with, with wounds down, down this, uh, yes. down this path. So, yes, yeah, thank, so you. thank you. So, yeah. So thank you so much for being on today and, um, I'll leave everyone with this, this little quote, um, just remembering lineage goes beyond your ancestors. You are meant to connect to the cosmos. So you may finally find your family, your cosmic family. (laughs) So until next time, thank you. Thank you for listening to Cosmic Roadmap. If you're curious about astrogeography and where you're meant to be on the planet, Go to CosmicRoadmap.com to download your free Passport to Purpose. You can also book a session with me where we can explore your own cosmic roadmap and chart your next destination in business, love, and life.